Hello everyone, I'm testing out something brand new, doing instead of just a Will's Week in Whiskey as I normally do it, where I record it, edit it, put it up later. I thought I'd do a uh, live tasting here on YouTube. I've never gone live on YouTube before, but I thought it would be a fun time to do it. So I'm going to look at my phone and make sure everything is synced up and, and working as I expect it to. And I think Grease is actually going to publish this in our Facebook groups. So uh, welcome everyone. I'm going to do something new and that is I'm going to do a fresh crack here tonight. And this is the Kentucky Owl, uh, Kentucky straight rye whiskey, the last rye batch. This is the 10 year small batch rye. It's the fourth rye release that Dixon has done. And it is the final one. It comes in this new tube, which is new and it is 112.8 proof, and it is, uh, it's going to be good. I'm going to click over here onto YouTube and see uh, if there's any comments coming through. So, it says everything is good. Looks like it's working. I'll be able to look down and also get comments down there as well. But um, for you just joining... Let me tell you what is going on. I am doing the live tasting of Kentucky Owl, Kentucky Straight Rye, Batch 4. Now, this is the last rye batch. It is 10 years old, small batch, blended by Dixon, 112.8 proof. And I'm going to dive in. So, the previous ryes and, and bourbons as well did not come in a tube. This is something you see... Um, in things like E.H. Taylor or some of the old Willets. It's got kind of a sturdy copper top here. I probably should have pre-done this, but I may not be able to get it off. So I'm going to have to go for another bottle. There we go. All right. Say something in the chat if you are watching. So I know you're here. Ask any questions if you want. Um, but if you're just joining, once again, Kentucky Owl Batch 4 Rye, the final rye. Um, I do like that they put it in this tube. This is new um, for the series, but it is the final one. So it's kind of like, man, I wish you had done it for all of these. It's got kind of this paper, which it looks like. This one's got a, the wrapping over the cardboard came a little undone. It was a little bit difficult to get the copper top off, so it's a nice, secure seal. Um, my buddy Steven Sussman is watching. Thanks for watching, and he says he likes the tube. So here we go. All right, so this was bottled in May of 2020, so they've had it ready to go. This is batch number four. Like I said, I'll read. It looks like everything in this portion here matches up what's actually on the bottle and then the same on the front. It's like they just uh, duplicated the label essentially onto the tube, which is good. I like that. Gives you some info. If you're looking at it in the tube, classes it up a little bit. Now this is age stated 10 years old, but they also say that it's an age range of 10 to 13 years in this rye. And so I will, Go ahead and now take the foil. This bottle itself looks just like batch three, except, nope, even that, even the copper top on the cork. It's got a green wood around the cork. So, Like I said, looks just like the batch three rye um, and everything except for the tube. I really like it. The corks were different in batch one and two, then three and four, but they got consistent with this, and now it's the final batch. So I'll read what it says as I pour it up. Nice, generous pour there. Save some for others. All right, so it says, 10-year-old uh, can... Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. The last rye batch is the final release in this series and marks the end of an amazing journey for me. I'm very proud of this release and think it's ending on a very special note. Save this one for the right occasion. Well, the right occasion happened to be right here now on YouTube. 
with you podcasters. So, going to give it a nose. Oh, nice, sweet aroma there. I like when ryes get over 10 years old. They start to really get sweet from the barrel. Let's see. So I get caramel, I get uh, sweet um, oak to it. I think there's some apple in there, so maybe some bright fruit. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm what I'm getting: some caramel, some oak, some sweetness. Definitely a lot of barrel characteristic, but. Uh, not a ton of spice on the nose. It's a cast strength or batch strength, and that's um, 112. 112.8 proof is what this rings in at. All right, I'm going to dive in, taste it, let you guys know. It's very good. The Kentucky All Rise have been some of my favorite whiskey over the past few years that they've been released. Um, I remember when they announced they were doing a, a rye uh, with batch one, and that was one bottle I really wanted to seek out and get, and I got one. I still have a little bit left of one of those bottles. The price has gone up. I believe that first one was... $125 to $150 premium product. It was age stated 11 years. And um, then it was roughly around that, the next release. Then it was $199 for batch three, uh, which was, was pretty steep. And then this final release, which is a special release, unique, but it is up to $299 MSRP. So pretty pricey bottle. It's a special bottle. It's the final one. Um, if you're a follower of the podcast or if you know anything about our relationship, we are good friends with Dixon Deadman. He's been a blessing to our podcast community. He's done a lot for us. He's done um, a lot of tastings. He's, he's allowed us to come take over his inn twice now uh, for Whiskey Weekend. And so we have a good relationship with him. So there's a little bit more special um, bond with, with a bottle like this for us. So I 100% think something like this is really worth it. Uh, I So th there is like that sentimental value to me. It is definitely a premium luxury product, and it comes along with that, with that price tag. I know that uh, the rye that he was putting in, that Dixon was putting into these releases, um, was special rye. The age statement for batch three and then for batch four dropped from 11 years old to 10 years old. And that wasn't because they were just having to find younger stocks. It was that some of the whiskey that they had that was 10 years old. And Dixon said, this is ready. This needs to be put in to the rye right now. And that actually brought the age statement down because the age statement is the youngest whiskey in the batch. And so that's, that's where it ended up. Um, this, once again, is 10 years old, and they're ending the rye on a, one, on a very high note. Um, but because that stock of special rye that he had, they don't have anymore. So they're not going to continue the product, it seems, just for the sake of continuing it or trying to source it, which I imagine is getting harder and harder as more people are getting into the sourcing game and trying to uh, come away with, with different... Um, products and different special iterations like when you find a really unique lot of rye uh, as they did and, and different barrels to blend together um, I doubt it's as easy as just oh let's just do that again and even though the price tag is steep and that comes along with the ownership of the Kentucky Owl brand as well uh, I do know that whatever Dixon puts out, he's also putting his name on. His name remains on it, and he's very proud of it. Uh, this is a rye to be proud of. It is not a everyone run out and buy it. It is definitely a special occasion uh, type of product 
It is very expensive. I see Aaron Blizzard on YouTube said, I would pay $100, but they are asking much for this stuff anymore. So, um, yes, it, the price has gone up, especially since batch one. So over these four years, there's now this fourth and final release of Rye. It is, like I said, it, you can't look away from what has happened. It has been an increase in the product uh, pricing, and that's where we're at. There are definitely more um, expensive bottles out there. There's definitely more expensive limited release rise out there. I think of uh, Boss Hog. I think of even I think the 15-year rye standard release of Whistle Pig is similarly priced. Um, this isn't a release for everyone to run and buy. And it, uh, it it also probably isn't one that's going to just be sitting out there. It will be priced in a, in a way that um, it, it will be able to be found, I believe. Uh, but it's probably not a huge release and also not going to just be lingering on shelves for too long. If you are a big fan of rye, of high-end rye, of very complex rye, um, ADHD whiskey, Matt, he wants me to pass him the owl. So pass it to you right now. Take a sip. Um, I don't know. This is one that I will enjoy pouring for friends, pouring for people on special occasions, special bottle shares, doing a lineup between, uh, the entire lineup. I still have a little bit of one and two, and I have an unopened bottle of three on, on the nose, uh, as Dixon would say, first blush. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, uh, batch three is still my favorite of these. It was one of the most perfect rye expressions I've ever had. This is very, very close. It has the complexity, it has the flavor profile that I'm looking for in a rye. Um, you drink this and I don't think, huh? That's, that's an expensive bottle of just regular old rye. There is something special to it. There is a depth of flavor that I'm getting from it. And it's um, at that age, rye just turns into a magical thing to me. Once it gets uh, really nine years and above, you start to just see different characteristics, different sweetness that competes with the spice that comes naturally from the grain. And I'm really a big fan of that. Um, if you are not sold on rye, not for you. Um, if you aren't necessarily a fan of, of that uh, higher end thing, if you take it or leave it, don't seek it out. I don't think that it's something that um, you need to sit there and contemplate like, uh, I'm not a big fan of rye or I don't want to spend a ton of money on a bottle, but do I have to go get this? I think that there are difficult conversations when it's like, okay, something's over a hundred dollars and someone's going to tell you to go buy it. That's up to you. But personally, I really like the way that this rye turned out. Um, I am, like I said, a fan of Dixon's products and his work. There's a lot of sentimental value to this. Uh, I actually got to try this in its pre-release stage back at the end in March when he was still um, tinkering with it, getting it right where he wanted it to be. And I remember it was a remarkable experience then. There's a lot of memories from that weekend that are conjured up when I when I drink something like this. But um, these type of special bottles, what I look forward to doing is getting together with people like uh, podcasters, like our buddy Bearded Dram, like if uh, Matt and I are able to get together ADHD whiskey, who is, I mean, I've heard he's one of the best tasters in the world. I think he's been deemed that. So I'd like to get his take on it personally as well. Um, he's a cool guy. If you don't follow him, you should check that out. But I have a feeling if you follow our meager YouTube channel, you're probably already following him. So check that out. Uh, but that's, that's kind of what I, I look for a bottle like this for. I like to get involved, uh, get friends together, make an event out of it and have something memorable. And I think this is one of those ryes that is going to be a memorable bottle. If you pour it for friends. Um, let's see, I've got a few statements on here. I'm going to go through. 
Um, Stephen does bring up that uh, he says, you know, people are going to know that it's the last batch. It's probably not going to sit around like a lot of other rye batches. That's actually, that's it's probably a fair statement. The fact that they are marketing it as the last rye, it says it on the tube. Um, that may actually cause people to consider the, the $300 price tag and spring for it. Um, ADHD Whiskey says batch three is tremendous. I agree. I think this is right up there with it. Batch three, though, is still one of my top five favorite whiskeys I think I've ever had. Um, Aaron Blizzard said, congrats, Matt. I'm buying Bardstown stuff now because you, my wife, says something completely different than thanks. <laughs> it's fair. Hey, and, I mean, congratulations to Matt. Super cool thing. I liked watching that journey and uh, couldn't have gone to a better guy. Really appreciate that. And Grease and I have actually been uh, talking. I know Grease has reached out to you, Matt, that we're going to try to have a conversation with you on the podcast soon to learn about what that was like. Um, Steven said he did love the Batch 4 iteration we had at Whiskey Weekend. Steven is one of our alumni of Whiskey Weekend. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we have a teaser of what Whiskey Weekend Batch 1 was on our YouTube channel. It's like pinned. Uh, in that like highlighted video, if you go just to our YouTube channel. So if you're here, just, you know, click over. Um, and you'll f- learn a little bit about that, but you can also sign up. We're having one in April in Louisville at the Galt House. So go to the podcast.com if you want to check it out there. Let's see who else we got. Um, Stevens also said this bottle solid holiday pour and for the New Year's and literally living through this year. Agree, sometimes you got to reward yourself, and I feel like something like this is a special bottle. Um, yeah, so let's see. Anything else that's going on? I appreciate you guys watching. This is my first time going live like this. I hope everything has looked good. I'm not the grease when it comes to audiovisual. Oh, I'm sorry, when it comes to the visual component of something like this. So my audio, I hope, is also good. Um, but that's typically my end of it. And I'm going to sit here and drink this and see if any other comments come through. But if you are just stumbling upon this, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. I've been doing Will's Week in Whiskey, which is kind of like a news and headlines updates. Uh, we did a couple unboxing videos. We're trying to utilize this a little bit more to um, reach people in a different way than our podcast. And if you don't know about our podcast, it's The Podcast, which is... Uh, what this channel is. So once again, you can find it through there, but we do a weekly uh, podcast about whiskey and entertainment and we call it whiskey tainment. That's kind of our, our shtick. And it's not necessarily all news and facts and tasting notes. It's just two guys hanging out, having a drink and having a lot of fun with it as well. Um, so Aaron is asking, am I going to be doing live more often? Uh, if people like it, yes, I think that's my goal. I'm going to try to build out some graphics and things like that. Um, we used to do a lot of lives on Instagram, but it's been a couple years since we really did that. And we're really trying to see some growth here in the YouTube side, um, because we know there is a big whiskey community here in the YouTube arena. And we know we have really good friends like Matt at ADHD whiskey or Chad and Sarah at it's bourbon night. Um, really good people. And We want to hang out with y'all on this end as much as we can since we're normally on the uh, just audio side in a podcast form. And we've got a lot of people that consume us that way, but we want to try to uh, meet whiskey, like-minded whiskey drinkers wherever they are. So um, like I said, if y'all like it, subscribe, ring the bell so you get the notification and we'll try to do more lives. I'll try to get Grease more involved, get him to do some stuff and I'm sure he'll be waiting anxiously with notes about how this live looked (laughs) and be like, oh man, you did not do what you're supposed to do. But other than that, um, it's a great rye. I really like it. Uh, I'll try to do some more fresh cracks, uh, things like that. Just open up a new bottle, give you my first take, my unbiased impression because there's a camera staring down at me and let you know how it goes. But other than that, Like I said, check us out at thepodcast.com. Subscribe to this channel. Go to podcaskers.com. It's P-O-D-C-A-S-K-E-R-S.com. And that'll take you to a direct 
uh, link for our YouTube group, or I'm sorry, for our Facebook group, which is uh, where we do a lot of interacting. A lot of good people in there. It, it'll ask you a question. How did you hear about podcasters? We do that mainly to keep bots out um, and things like that, just so that there's not a ton of fluff or auto join or, you know, uh, people trying to sell things and stuff in our group. So if you're not a part of that, go ahead and check it out because we have a lot of fun over there. A lot of good discussion. And um, yeah, so that's going to do it for this fresh crack, this drinking of Kentucky Owl Rye Batch 4. I really like it. I recommend it. Buy bar pass. I would have to put it personally as a buy. I did buy it. It uh, is a bottle I'll keep around for a while as well to share with people for special occasions. It's not going to be just like cracking it any weeknight, having a pour, sitting around watching uh, Netflix or something. It, this is definitely a, a special bottle to share with special friends. So check it out. Hope you enjoy it. Leave uh, comments if you're watching this later about, um, you know, what, what kind of bottles you like for special occasions, things like that, just so I can respond to them later since you weren't on live. But that's going to do it. I'm going to reach over here and awkwardly click in stream, and I'll see you all later.